treated with radiotherapy and IL-2 and seeing a dramatic uh, response to that therapy. Um, but we know that uh, the responses are limited in the sense that not all patients respond. Uh, some patients get very durable responses, which will essentially cure them of the disease, whereas others relapse. And we believe that a lot of this is down to uh, the complexity of the tumor itself. And so tumors, as we're beginning to realize more and more, are not just blobs of cancer cells. They're actually a complex tissue with various cell types in that mixture interacting in different ways. And the relative proportions of the different uh, cell types that you have in a tumor and how they're interacting with each other uh, are, are the things which are actually dr driving the response of tumors to, to therapy response and their biological behavior. So in order to understand who responds to immunotherapies and how we can prolong those and uh, develop better ones, we want to understand uh, the complexity of the tumor microenvironment. So you could ask, why would we do that with a deconvolution approach? We have these nice new single cell technologies now, uh, which can actually interrogate uh, things at the single cell level. And of course, the motivation is that the single cell technologies are still pretty expensive. They still have uh, various technical artifacts. I'll talk very briefly about that coming up. And the other reason is that we want to be able to leverage many of the uh, public data out there, which are still primarily based on uh, doing things like bulk expression profiles or bulk samples. But the advantage is that we often have significantly larger cohorts, um, and we have clinical outcomes and so on, and we want to be able to leverage that data. And so this is a picture you've probably all seen before. This is the growth in the gene expression omnibus um, since, it was, since its inception. Um, I looked a couple of days ago, and currently there's something like uh, a million data sets, uh, 2.7 million samples, and we want to be able to leverage these sorts of uh, data in order to uh, analyze things about the tumor microenvironment. And I just want to uh, mention that how people other than GEO and the Rare Express and the biological community are getting into this sort of thing now. Uh, we were at a conference at Woods Hole a couple of uh, weeks ago, and I was happy to see that they're also, they have a data closet where presumably they keep their data. Um, they actually apparently do a good job of cleaning it. There was a, a cleaner right outside, so that they're obviously doing a good job of that. Unfortunately, I found that the closet was locked, so they haven't embraced open data yet. Uh, but we want to try and enable people to uh, use these public data sets are, are available in order to, to understand the, the, the microenvironment in tumors. So briefly before I dive into the challenge, I'm just going to draw this distinction between uh, deconvolution versus gene set analysis. Uh, just to mention that even though I keep saying deconvolution, we're not biased against uh, gene set type approaches. Uh, but things like single cell GSEA are slightly different from deconvolution in the sense that you're typically generating something like a, a sort of score based, uh, a, a score based on some sort of signature which you can uh, use to differentiate between samples and compare samples. Whereas deconvolution in the strictest sense is really when you're attempting to quantify different cell types uh, or actually more specifically the contribution of RNA from different cell types to a mixture of RNAs uh, in a particular sample. And there's also the, the distinction of relative versus absolute quantification, which I'll, I'll, I'll briefly touch on. Generally speaking, the tumor deconvolution uh, can be set up as, as basically a linear regression. So you have uh, an expression profile on the left of a bulk sample. I'm talking about gene expression, but in general, you might think about things like methylation as well. Um, and basically, what you want to do is to decompose uh, your bulk gene expression profile into the sum of the contributions of the different cell types which are in that mixture. And so this is just a linear regression problem where you have the, the mixture profile is the weighted sum of uh, the individual profiles of the cells in that mixture weighted by their relative uh, abundance in that mixture. And then, as I said, at, at the far right, depending on whether you uh, impose a restriction that the uh, the proportions have to sum to one, you'll get either a relative or an absolute estimate of the different cell types in that mixture. So just as one example uh, that I'm familiar with because we were involved with the, with the development of it um, is Cybersort, which was published a few years ago, and it just nicely illustrates the various aspects that you have in, typically in a deconvolution algorithm. Uh, you typically have some set of reference profiles which represent the sort of purified uh, gene expression profile of the different cell types that you're interested in. From that, you can derive some sort of signature matrix or barcode, which represents um, 
uh, not necessarily uniquely expressed genes in each of those cell populations, but it gives you some method of uh, some metric for distinguishing between them. There'll be some core computational algorithm which takes the signature matrix and the bulk expression profiles that you're interested in in deconvolving. In the case of CyberSort, this is a, as a particular method called new support vector regression, which we found is very robust, but there are many other types of computational core which people put into these. And then on the far right, what you get out is some relative estimate of the different or absolute estimate of the different proportions of different cell types which are in your mixture. And ideally, you'd like to have uh, uh, some sort of significance, uh, uh, statistical uh, significance that you can put on your deconvolution results. So the way we use CyberSort, and this is just illustrating again the whole influence of uh, the immune system in cancer, was to actually uh, deconvolve a, a bunch of different public array data sets. We developed this resource called Precog, where we'd gone out and collected together all the public data that we could find on cancer gene expression studies where we had clinical outcomes. And what we did was to apply CyberSort to that to deconvolve and find out what the relative proportion of different immune cell types was in each of the mixture uh, mixtures from the, the samples in Precog, and then to basically associate that with clinical outcome for patients. And so what we found is if you look at these 22 different immune cell types, which uh, CyberSort knows about in a bunch of different tumor types, the green corresponds to where high infiltration levels of those cell types corresponds with longer survival outcomes for patients, and red corresponds with, with shorter outcomes for patients. So, of course, you can do that with a bunch of other methods, not just CyberSort. There's at least uh, 20 different methods out there in the literature. Uh, in fact, many more. These are just the, the 20 that I could easily come up with. Um, and what's really been missing is a framework uh, for comparing these in an unbiased way. And so, obviously, uh, I don't need to explain to anybody in this room why uh, we're interested in doing a dream challenge, because that's exactly what dream is, is uh, aimed at, uh, at doing. So in terms of a deconvolution challenge, uh, what you would, uh, the various parts of it, that, are, that the sort of uh, mechanics of it, obviously you have some tumor biopsies, uh, you obtain samples from that. In terms of the deconvolution at the bottom, you might generate a, a bulk gene expression profile and apply your computational method to estimate what was in that mixture. But then you also want to be able to compare that to some sort of what people would call ground truth. So for example, you might uh, take a section uh, uh, to fix a piece of the tissue, uh, stain it with antibodies, for example, and do some of these techniques, the imaging techniques like IHC or more complex methods such as MIBI and Codex. Uh, you might also think of dissociating cells and doing some single cell technology such as CYTOF or single cell RNA-seq. Uh, those methods are you're sort of, in principle, they tell you exactly what's going on at the single cell level, but we know, of course, that there are various artifacts introduced by dissociation, by putting things through flow cytometer, or by doing single cell RNA-seq. And so what we decided to do in the first stage of the challenge was to kind of isolate essentially the computational part of the challenge here at the bottom. So what we decided to do was uh, to come up with this sort of admixture challenge essentially, where we want to really isolate the sort of computational part of this, uh, of this uh, problem, uh, having and um, reserve the comparison to ground truth for, for a later uh, step of the challenge. So what we want to do is to put together an infrastructure where we can actually uh, have people comparing their algorithms to identify what the contribution of RNA from different cell types is in a, in a mixed uh, expression profile. And we're planning to do that both by generating in silico mixtures and also as a purely computational test. So there the test is purely which algorithm is best at identifying what's in a, in a well-defined mixture, then we're going to uh, sort of increase the complexity somewhat by using defined mixtures of RNA, which is going to introduce experimental noise and variation and so on. And then in the next step of the challenge, we'll actually be doing more realistic things where we'll be generating bulk RNA-seq together with these other sort of gold standards or sort of different standards, I like to call it, such as CYTOF and single-cell RNA-seq. So what we want to do for the admixture subtype is basically we want this to be as realistic as possible, uh, obviously with the restriction that it's, we're going to be doing in silico and, and, and admixture type approaches, but we want to include the different cell types which we anticipate would be present in a solid tumor. So for example, the cancer cells, uh, immune cells, and other types of cells over a, a realistic range of tumor infiltration levels. So if you're familiar with uh, looking at these types of samples, the, the actual 
uh, proportion of tumor cells can be anything from 30 to 100% in, in a typical tumor, in a typical solid tumor. We want to try and probe the limits of detection that these algorithms can do, which we can do very easily through the in silico approaches, and also to assess the effect of highly related, or what's called collinear immune populations. So for example, different types of CD8 T cell are very highly correlated with each other uh, at the transcriptional level, and we want to see if algorithms can actually pull those apart uh, when applied to mixtures. And then, as I said, we'll be comparing these to, to known mixing proportions by doing sort of admixture experiments uh, where we can generate the ground truth. Uh, we know exactly what's in the mixture. So what we're planning to do in terms of the challenge is we're going to point to uh, things, to sources of data which we think are, are good for uh, developing things like these signature matrices. Originally, we, th we were thinking that we would curate and pre-process some of these data, but actually that could be an important part of which algorithms and methods uh, perform differently. So we're going to essentially point to specific training data for purified populations. Uh, we'll also provide um, curated bulk expression data from that's already out there in the public domain where we have either microarray or RNA or RNA sequencing data on bulk profiles, but we also have some sort of ground truth, for example, cytop or flow cytometry from various sources. And then the part which we'll be contributing in terms of the data is that we're actually isolating purified populations, profiling with RNA-seq, um, and we're going to, from that, generate uh, both in silico mixtures, which will obviously be highly well-defined in terms of what's in the mixtures, and then also doing these, um, what I refer to as the defined admixtures, where we're actually taking these RNAs, mixing them together in known populations, and then doing sequencing on those, uh, on those uh, bulk samples. Just uh, I'll briefly touch on the fact that uh, some of the, the, the technical details, this is actually going to be done as a, a sort of dockerized approach. I, I'll just refer you to the paper which, uh, which Justin and Julio Cesar Rodriguez have, uh, have published previously. But this is basically similar to other dream challenges. So I'll just uh, end by acknowledging that this is a, very much a group effort. Um, we have a mixture of computational biologists, so myself, Aaron Newman, and Aurelian, um, uh, have developed uh, deconvolution approaches. We will not be participating in the challenge because we felt that was that would be a uh, conflict of interest. We have some biological cont contributors. I want to particularly emphasize Brian White uh, at Sage Biosystems, who's really been driving forward, th forward this process, and he's the contact. Uh, if you're interested, we currently have a few hundred people already pre-registered. Um, so we're hoping to launch this very soon in the new year, um, and I'll just end by acknowledging the funding from NIH and NCI uh, through uh, the SAGE Biosystems uh, U24, which is part of the Cancer Systems Biology Consortium, and uh, an administrative supplement that they very generously gave to SAGE and Stanford to do this challenge. Thanks. Thank you. So we have time for probably one quick question. Anybody? So when you talk about the, um, the, how many cell types are you planning on deconvoluting? Have you guys talked about that? I mean, there's a 22 from the signature matrix from CyberSort. Is that? Uh, no. So unfortunately, NI NCI didn't give us enough money to do that. So okay. we're going to focus on about 13 or 14. Okay. Uh, we will, what we're planning to do is we obviously need to tell people what they need to deconvolve from the mixture. So mm -hmm. we'll have... Um, we'll tell people what's in there in terms of the immune populations and other things and what type of cancer cells we're mixing in. Uh, we will hold out some things as kind of like unknown, um, uh, unknown content because that's a more realistic problem. But it'll be like 13, 14 different cell types in the mixtures. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let's thank the speaker.